Hello Ratbags, welcome to the Portal Knights review. Portal Knights is finally out worldwide. It came out in Europe a few days early. Now it's available everywhere for Steam, Xbox and the PS4. Portal Knights is a role-playing sandbox game, very much similar to games like Minecraft, Terraria, maybe even Dragon Quest Builders, but has it got much more than that? You create your character and you can choose between three classes, Ranger, Mage and Warrior. Now it doesn't really matter as much, it will just give you a bit of a boost in the start in some stats. Later on you can really mix up your gameplay and your combat style. The character creation is quite fun and unique and it lends itself to the game. The game is a colourful cartoony style game, it's not going for the realistic look. I like the fact that you can customise the character instead of having to buy skin packs and stuff like that. I really like that aspect of it um, and so just have some fun with it. and enjoy Enjoy the actual creation of it. So once you've created your character, you're going to be going out into the Portal World's world. With your Warrior class, you're going to be able to do melee damage and take a few hits a little bit more. Then with your Mage class, you're going to be able to deal a lot more magical damage and you're going to have a little bit more choice in the spells that you can throw. You've also got the Ranger class, which obviously operates at range, but it's very quick movement as well. You can change and mix up the style, like I said, later on in the game, you can really go for different armor and weapons or level up your character in whatever way you really want. But the very beginning, it just gives you a bit of a boost or buff in them classes. Your worlds are so vast and different. There's over 47 portal worlds. You open them up by finding the portal gates. Some of these worlds will have certain resources, some of them will have certain enemy types. So to progress through the game, you need to unlock as many as possible on your route to fight in the portal guardians. The map and travel system is pretty simple, it's pretty good, you can literally go around, you can create different size universes as well, you've got small, medium and large on PC and on console I do believe you have small and large. So it is varied, you can mix it up. After a little while I was starting to think the worlds were starting to get a bit repetitive but as soon as I said that I discovered another brand new world and another brand new biome with lots of different creatures so it did keep me going a little bit. I do worry in the long haul though will it get a bit repetitive they are procedurally generated so the worlds will no look the same on any of your friends worlds or any let's plays they will all be different but just in the same location you're always going to find fort finch as your port or world number three just the actual land and where the houses are will all be different Every day there's a daily event which gives you extra bonus buffs or items so it's definitely worth doing. They'll be scattered all around one of the portal islands so it adds a bit of variety to it. Once you do open up quite a few of the portals you really do start to see the length and breadth of the variety. There's lots of different worlds to explore, there are lots of different biomes. Like I said early on in the game it did seem a little bit repetitive until I defeated the boss. Then after that it was like whoa, got loads of choice, loads of different areas. Some of the resources are really hard to find, some of them you'll be hoping that one world has two or three of the same resources. What you're looking at now is the actual portals, that's how you transport to all these lands. You need to find them. It can be a bit hard unless you find a certain tool or make one to actually find the portals, especially if you've chosen large maps, but that's part of the fun of it. Um, when you've got the portals and you've collected the portal cubes to open up the doors, that's what progresses you through the game and that's what ultimately you're trying to do is jump from portal to portal. There's lots of things like dungeons to explore, sometimes dungeons were a little bit underwhelming in terms of the loot you've got and there's lots of different enemy types. Some of the enemies are real sponges, particularly if they're higher level, so you definitely will know you need to come back when you've got either better gear or armour or your character's higher level, otherwise you'll be here a long time, just like I am here. Trying to take on some event NPC baddies. You do lose some coinage and the coins are used to buy stuff from NPCs. There is a good variety in creatures. Again, just when I thought the creatures were going to be a little bit samey samey, they started having much more variety. Lots of them were doing different types of elemental damage and that was really cool. It meant I had to really start thinking about what weapons I was going to take with me. Would I need a weapon for each sort of elemental to take care of them? You can craft, you can build, you can make your own home, you can make any one of the portal islands your home base and you can build houses or homes on all of them. Collecting resources specifically for building seems a bit more of a chore than you'd find in games like Minecraft or Terraria but it's definitely worth it if you want to do a bit more creative. I love block building games Games, especially things like this I think that's where my true love is with with sort of sound play games like this one there's lots of crafting as well you can craft lots of potions and even if you're not a mage you can utilize certain spells um, 
the actual classes are locked in terms of weapons so if you're a mage you're not going to necessarily be able to use all the warrior weapons and you're not going to be able to use all the archer weapons but you can unlock lots of different types of armor once again you get going and you've explored a little bit more and you've unlocked some more of the crafting benches the advanced ones you can mix and match all different types of armor depending on what your play style is and what you've put your points into you can customize your home with sort of uh, placeables like storage, furniture, and obviously you can redecorate and put flags up and stuff like that. It adds just a little bit more to it. The NPCs are people that you're going to find in the world. There's three types. You've got traders, you've got normal NPCs, and then you've got quest givers. It seems a little bit lackluster. The traders obviously just do their job and they're there to sell you items. The uh, quest givers always give you a big huge XP boost so it's really worth doing one of their quests. But the other NPCs were just a bit, I don't know, a bit boring. I found them just, you know, they could have added a little bit more lines to what they say. They don't do anything, they don't offer you anything other than just someone to talk to or someone to nearby. Once you've got into the game a bit and you're starting to progress, you can see you can level up your attributes and really go for what playstyle you want. So you could just go by what it says there, it says the Ranger, Agility and Dexterity, but maybe you've got bored of that style, maybe you want to do something different. There's ways to reset all your points so that you can refocus them and choose to be like a War Mage or choose to be a magical melee character. It all just depends on your playstyle. You've got talents as well that you unlock and these just give small little incremental buffs. Um, depending again on your playstyle and your character especially like for weapon specializations you've got bow crossbow and sling there for my ranger class as you progress the enemies will get harder really hard in fact if you like i said not prepared for them you'll find it very hard to take on some of them so be warned the dungeons don't necessarily have the biggest selection of enemies sometimes though they do scale and they do change so if you've been finding one dungeon particularly hard if you go to another portal and come back they'll actually put a different enemy in their actual dungeons so that was pretty cool the first person combat is okay that's one of the benefits of this game you can play it in first person or third person I found the first person um, combat controls a little bit difficult to do, you couldn't escape from people, you couldn't sort of dodge out of the way from people, the button just wasn't very good and in general trying to escape or trying to lock onto another enemy wasn't always the easiest it could have been. You can disable it though, you can have manual combat so if you really want to play it that way you can do but it would have been nice if the camera wasn't as so sticky where you could easily focus on to different enemies. Maybe they'll add that in a later update. First person is really cool though, and the fact that you can do that just adds another element to how you want to play the game, first or third, and it's really useful to switch between the two, particularly if you're looking for resources or you're fighting in combat. You'll find lots of chests, lots of loot balls, but like I said, it was a little bit lackluster in terms of what you actually found in the chests. So I hope in the future they'll update it and add just a little bit more variety, and a little bit more choice. There are lots of enemy types, as I said to you, after a while they do become sort of just different variations so you will come across different style turtles and different style slimes etc but these are the ones where you really want to face off against the portal guardians now these are quite tough to handle and you know you've got to work out exactly how to defeat them in this one in this instance you've got to take out the smaller worms before you can take on the big daddy worm it took me a while to work that out and that was really nice that was really cool I, I didn't instantly know how to defeat him he wasn't easy I died once at least and just running around and whittling down his energy was is what you had to do but it was really cool to come up across a big boss after exploring four or five worlds they plan to add even more I do believe at the moment I think there's three or four portal bosses once you defeat them you get new gear new items um, particularly recipes that you can craft so you can always craft it again if you need to so all in all I've sunk about 15 or 16 hours into portal nights in the last two weeks and I've really enjoyed it and that's quite a lot for me at the moment having that much time spent in one game definitely really relaxing going and getting stuff it's just one of them games that's really cool just to chill out and play I can well imagine it'd be fun to play it with friends and do stuff as well I think the actual crafting and the way you can craft lots of different weapons and armor is really good i think that's definitely one of its best points well its bad points though are probably things like the npcs just not having a bit more variety in things to say there's not much of a story either there's nothing you find really that gives you more information it'd be nice to get a little bit of lore since it's very rpg focused i know minecraft and terraria don't necessarily have that sort of stuff either but them games are fairly old now. I would have liked to have seen just a little bit more added in terms of story development, why you're actually fighting these portal guardians, other than just the very, very basic intro at the start. 
definitely low. I think the camera work needs improving, specifically in combat. It's just very, very buggy sometimes. It doesn't always hold on to the enemies when you're trying to focus on them. But otherwise, it's really good that you can go in first person and third person when you want to. I also like the fact that you can just get really stuck into lots of the enemies. So even if you're not fully leveled up, you can necessarily try and take them on. It's just going to take you a bit longer. The music's pretty cool, you know, just like any sort of sandbox game, you need quite generic music so it doesn't irritate you, and it didn't irritate me, so that's a winner. The actual graphics are pretty solid and pretty good as well. Obviously, it is a block game, so it's not going to look ultra realistic, but I really like the cartoony style, I really like the characters, I really like the animations as well, they're pretty solid, apart from first person where you can't see their arms, but again, maybe that's something they'll improve on in the future. There is DLC packs which I'm a bit disappointed in, I hope they're not going to go too mad on releasing lots of DLC or making it pay to win or certainly getting things that you know you won't be able to find ever in the game. It's alright for cosmetic items and things like that but I'd be disappointed if they start bringing out DLC weapons and you know levels and stuff. So is it unique enough from Minecraft and Terraria, the benchmarks that we judge all sandbox survival games on? Yes it is, it does heavily borrow from some of them games, even Dragon Quest Builders, but it does it in its own way and it still does it enough to make it unique. In fact it takes some of the best bits from them games, particularly like the loot from Terraria and the boss fights, and some of the crafting elements from Minecraft. I really enjoy that aspect of it, I think Port Knights is a fantastic game, if you like them previous games I mentioned, definitely go ahead and buy it, it has got the rat bag seal of approval for sure. Go out there, let me know what you'll think of the game if you do buy it. There is a free demo as well, so go and give it a try. I'm Jay Plays Games, I'll see you later.